Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're going to take a few moments to take a look at the idea behind Marco Polo. It's really important. And of course, we all know the kids get the water, he kills Marco. I'm kidding you. We're talking about Marco Polo, the merchant of Venice, the explorer, the traveler from 13th century. Italy. Now, before we talk about a little bit of the specifics, the big idea, of course, is this is one of those kind of, you know, wheels of history that turns everything. And Marco Polo represents that change, really kind of connecting two different civilizations, two different kinds of worlds, and creating one global community. So he was born in 1254 in Venice, Italy. He was born into a middle-class merchant family. In fact, his father and his uncle, they got out of town the year that he was born, before he was born. His father and his uncle, Niccolo and Mafia, I don't just speak Italiano very well. They actually left even before Marco Polo was born. They set their sights on the east to make their own fortune, landing in first Constantinople. They cashed out in 1260. Lucky for them, the next year the Eastern Roman Empire is going to re-enter Constantinople and burn down the Venetian quarters and blind all their citizens. How horrible is that? Very lucky for them. So they keep going east and they end up in the Mongol Empire, running into a dude by the name of Kubla Khan. He's the Yan Dynasty, first guy, big leader. I and mean, he's actually intrigued with you know, these foreigners, their religion, their customs, how their laws work. So he sends them back with instructions to go to the Pope in order to answer some questions. He wants some oil from the lamp of Jerusalem. I don't know, that's what he wanted. And he wants a hundred Christians that are skilled in the seven arts to come back to teach them about Western society. The seven arts, arithmetic and rhetoric and logic, mathematics and music, and I'm forgetting one, leave it in the comments below. So they go back and they end up coming back around 1269. Marco Polo is uh, 15, 16 years old and the Pope answers the question, sends them back to meet with Kublai Khan and they take little Marco Polo with them. Now they're going to be gone for a little while. Right? They're gone for 24 days. Kidding you. No, 24 weeks. No, kidding you. 24 months? No, 24 years. I kid you not. 24 years. And this is the exploration time. This is where they're all over Asia. And in fact, Marco Polo served under Kublai Khan. He was an ambassador and a negotiator. He learned all of the language, all of the customs, all of the trades, all of the spices and the foods, all of the inventions. Um, and Kublai Khan didn't want him to go back. They ended up sneaking back 24 years later when the king of Persia married Kublai Khan's niece, something like that. They escape out of the wedding party and they make their way back to Venice until around 1295. And they're coming back with all of these new customs and these new silks, these new foods, uh, noodles. They didn't have noodles. They didn't have gunpowder. The Chinese already invented gunpowder. They used it for rockets. They used it for fireworks. Of course, the Europeans are going to turn it into something a little more dangerous. They come back with paper and paper money. The Europeans are still like lugging around gold and stuff like that. They come back with compasses, which is going to be huge in terms of map making. And of course, they come back to a big parade. No, of course not. They come back to what you always come back to Europe in the 13th century, which is war. Marco Polo is captured and in prison he starts telling his tales which gets put into the book of marvels the travels of marco polo and this is the book that represents the knowledge piece that's going to influence all of those changes it's not immediate but when people start learning about these tales and some of them might have been exaggerated a little bit but they start learning about the customs and the new inventions and everything that we talked about before that's going to create a yearning for more people to want to do it and of course we didn't mention that he traveled along the silk road so that silk road is going to represent kind of that connection that bridge between the western civilization and the eastern civilization. And if the Mongols stayed in power, it might have been different. They were open to accepting some Western traditions, including Christianity. But the Chinese are going to conquer the Mongols. They're going to be a much more closed society. So really, the exchange in the beginning is going to be towards the West. So we are now going to have access to these new foods and these new clothings and these new inventions. And that's the big one. The paper is going to lead to the printing press and the dissemination of information. We talked about compasses map making and exploration. Christopher Columbus is going to have a big poster of Marco Polo up in his bedroom and that's going to motivate him to go want to find faster routes to the east. Of course he's going to go the wrong way and bump into the Bahamas but the big idea here is that Europe really thought they were you know the only ones in town and this has shown them that there's another town and that's going to motivate them to want to change and to adopt some of these customs. It's going to lead in a sense to the Renaissance 
Renaissance. It's the end of the Middle Ages. Marco Polo represents change. So we hope that you got the big idea. There's a million other things that you can learn. Maybe you should go read a book or something like that. And always remember, though, guys, at the end of a lecture, I always say it, where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you guys next time you press my buttons. I'm going to go play with my dog some more.